So the number of comrades on this call is truly incredible. And I encourage all of you to click speaker view at the top of your screen so that you can really focus on our four honorary guests tonight. Let me introduce you all to Jackie Fielder. Jackie Fielder is a DSA endorsed candidate for State Senate California District 11. She is an indigenous Latina and queer educator and organizer at San Francisco State University, as well as an active participant in the Black Lives Matter movement. Jackie graduated with a BA in public police and MA in sociology. She joined the No Dakota Access Pipeline movement, served as campaign coordinator for the Lakota People's Law Project, and has been a lead organizer for Mazaska Talks. She founded the San Francisco Public Bank Coalition, which has passed legislation creating the legal mechanisms for municipalities to divest public revenues from Wall Street banks and invest them in public, publicly owned banks that are directly accountable to the communities they serve. Jackie was an organizer for Mi Gente's hashtag No Tech for ICE campaign. In 2018, she successfully ran the DSA No on H campaign opposing a dangerous Republican-backed use of force policy proposed by San Francisco's Police Officers Association. She's been a board member at the Young Women's Freedom Center and published articles on environmental justice, fossil fuel divestment, indigenous rights, police violence, and public banking in the San Francisco Examiner, Teen Vogue, The Guardian, and Last Real Indians. Jackie, thank you so much for being here with us tonight, and I turn it over to you. Thank you so much for organizing and for having me. It's so exciting to see 156 people on this call. For the longest time, I've been waiting for DSA to, to come around across the state and finally show up as a statewide, fully fledged organization. So I'm so honored to be here, you know, uh, and it's such a great cause to be uh, all here on this call for. You know, I was born and raised in Southern California, and I grew up going to California public schools, and I was raised for most of my life by my single mom, who is a union member. I'm also a union member now, and, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine, but California ranks among the bottom in the nation for per student spending, and so schools and communities first is going to get us to where we need to be before the pandemic. Uh, it is just going to get us to be at the bare minimum of what we needed before we have encountered one of the biggest economic downturns of the modern era. And so Schools and Communities First is an important step in, in the project and the struggle against capitalism against the consolidation of wealth among a handful of, of individuals. And it is absolutely critical to the future of building the next generation of leaders who have the tools, who have the knowledge and the independent critical thinking skills challenge the powers that be for generations to come. I attended, uh, a middle school and high school where, you know, our, our bathrooms were supplied with like powdered soap. It was the most abrasive soap you could ever use. And at the same time, I remember growing up and being um, so upset because it seemed like every year or two, our teachers were being served pink slips. And this is happening in, as we know, the fifth largest economy in the world. And so as an educator myself now, in a pandemic, facing the, the state budget deficit, uh, even with a democratic supermajority in our California legislature, they are still talking about balancing the budget on the backs of our public school students, public sector employees, on our educators and all the school employees staff, instead of asking the wealthiest individuals and corporations to pay their fair share. And I remember being a student at Stanford and studying education policy and every year Prop 13 reform would come up. 
And I was so confused as to why we were still talking about it and not doing much about it. And so I commend all of the organizers up and down the state who have been fighting for this for decades. And finally, we've reached a point where it is now uh, a, a litmus test to make sure that you are on the side of our communities, that you understand that racial justice is education justice, is economic justice, and it is passing schools and communities first. And so this is just the bare minimum of what we need to support predominantly low-income students who are disproportionately served by our public schools. And it is also a step to expanding the, the vision that we have to make sure that California schools are once again the best in the nation. And so thank you everyone for organizing and for being on. And I am so excited to be supporting Prop 15 and to be in this struggle with you. Jackie Fielder, thank you so much. Such crucial points that you hit on. Um, I'm gonna introduce you all now to Keith D. Brown. He is a middle school teacher and is beginning his second term as president of the Oakland Education Association. Under Keith's leadership, OEA led teachers on a historic seven day strike in February, 2019, only six months into his term. Tens of thousands of Oaklanders of all ages joined teachers on picket lines and at mass rallies and actions in a fight for the future of public schools in, in Oakland. An Oakland native, he supports his community in the creation of restorative justice circles at his school, featured on Nick News, and working with community organizations to eliminate the school-to-prison pipeline and other social injustices. Keith, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you, Vanessa, and thank you um, to DSA for organizing this important rally. Uh, so it's important that we vote yes on um, Proposition 15. And I also wanna begin by uplifting the many um, educators on this call um, all around the state, teachers and educators were uh, preparing for um, the return um, to school um, under crisis distance learning and also just involved in many um, struggles to make sure that our students have safe, healthy, equitable schools. And also I wanna uplift just the work in um, Oakland with our um, educators hand in hand with um, families and um, you know, making sure that we begin the school year with the OEA strong start to make sure that our families have access to um, technology and also that we build the needed uh, community and relationships to um, greatly improve crisis distance learning. So it also just a uh, um, shout out to the OEA uh, bargaining team negotiating um, an MOU and I encourage everyone to go to um, Oakland Education Association Facebook page to find out how you can support. Um, so I just wanna begin because for far too long, our public schools have been drained of needed resources that our students need to thrive. California has the fifth largest economy in the world, but it ranks nearly last in per pupil education funding and also in teacher to student ratio. And in 1978, we had Proposition 13, which was disguised as protecting seniors, but it was clearly racial back, black backlash against the school finance decision, Serrano versus Pierce Priest, which required equalized school spending and school integration. Since, since then, for over 40 years, billionaires, privatization schemes have led to schools with no nurses, no counselors, large class sizes, and school closures in communities of color. California must do a better job of fully funding our schools. But today, it's a new day. We have 
Proposition 15, which will be on the ballot in November, Schools and Community First Initiative. Schools and Community First will close a loophole in Proposition 13 that allows our largest corporations to escape their share of commercial property tax. It will raise nearly $12 billion a year for our public schools and communities. And also um, it, is, it is important to note that when wealthy corporations begin to pay their fair share, we can truly fund the schools that our students deserve. This new funding will allow us to adequately fund essential student supports, also needed academic services, nurses and counselors. In Oakland, where I teach, we have far too many schools without a nurse um, on the school site. The COVID-19 pandemic, it is a wake up call for us when we shortchange the health of our students and put public health at risk. Today, our, our schools are scrambling to begin the year unprepared. Our schools lack enough laptops for students to use during crisis distance learning. They lack proper ventilation and PPE. Our students needed smaller class size, computers, and healthy air filtering before COVID. The passage of Proposition 15 can place 210 school nurses on Oakland school campuses. Proposition 15 can provide vital resources for safe, healthy, and equitable schools during this pandemic. In 2019, educators in Oakland and Los Angeles went on strike so that we can have the needed supports and resources such as smaller class sizes, nurses, counselors, mental health support. There is a growing movement in our society, in our state right now for a society that places people over profits. We have a powerful movement for black lives and a movement against racism, discrimination, and a movement against social and economic injustice. Rise up in your communities, rise up at your workplace, rise up in your unions, spread the word, text, phone bank, hold virtual house parties, vote yes on Proposition 15, schools and communities first. Our solidarity is the power that we have to defeat the billionaires and undo generations of disinvestment in our schools and community. Let's do this. Vote yes on Proposition 15. We will win for our students and our families. Thank you. Thank you, Keith Brown. That's right. We're going to rise up people over profit, everyone. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, our next speaker, Maikiko James, she serves on the National Political Committee of the Democratic Socialists of America and is a member of the Los Angeles chapter. Currently, the, she's the director of programs at Women in Films Los Angeles. Her work has centered around art and social impact, community organizing, youth leadership, immigration justice, survivor advocacy, and feminist media. Maikiko, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you so much, Vanessa, and to our incredible speakers. I'm so excited to be here with all of you as a born and bred Californian. This is so exciting to see the power of this body and, and everything that we're going to do together. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about opportunity, our opportunity as socialists. The current state of things, as we know, holds the opportunity for so many people to embrace the possibility and necessity of a socialist president future. This catastrophe has been created by racial capitalism, not the pandemic. 
All of the mess we're in right now could have been prevented if our government and corporations had decided to protect our lives and not their profits, as our speakers have said. So now is the time that we need to talk to everyone we know about exactly what is at stake. We are seeing it. We are living the worst case scenario. Schools and Communities First, or Prop 15, gives us a very specific opportunity to do this in practical terms. Not only implement more rational taxation on exorbitantly wealthy commercial developers and landowners, but to help people, and people whom it should be obvious we want to help, students, families, and teachers. And also, if it wasn't clear, this isn't a question about a lack of resources. When millions of people are out of work and can't pay rent, we've seen 467 billionaires have their wealth go up by over $730 billion during the pandemic alone. So it's not that the economy has stopped. It's that the money has just been moving in the same direction. It's always been moving and more obviously at the expense of people's lives. And a more majority of people in our country agree that our current income inequality is unsustainable. So passing Prop 15 is a way for people in California to realize our agency to make what we already believe a reality. We need to tax the rich in order to survive as a start. And as you've also heard, this is also our moment to support and build a powerful resurgent labor movement guided by workers. In Los Angeles, I've been so inspired by who has already been leading the fight for students in public schools. The power of educators and teacher unions like UTLA and OEA has been on full display over the past few years. And the strikes revealed not only a resurgence of the movement, but one largely guided by incredible women and women of color who comprise many of the educators in our state. Workers who are closest to this issue have the wisdom and experience we need right now. And it's crucial for us to provide the people power to make their demands a reality. As socialists, as DSA, we must show up in solidarity and for our collective liberation. Additionally, for those of us who are moved to defend Black lives in this moment, in conjunction with being in the streets, this is another clear way to ensure Black lives are valued and protected. We have to fight to pass policies that will directly benefit Black and Brown communities through public schools and resources for families, not to mention the abolition work that is getting cops out of schools and adding counselors and healthcare workers and more teachers and wraparound services and making schools a place where students' lives are actually nurtured as opposed to groomed for exploitation. And finally, I just want to say we have to engage people in a mass movement by meeting us where we are, because where we are is, to use an overused term, unprecedented. Again, right now, people are ready to get involved. So as education and care are critical for students, the fight for education is critical for all of us to recognize our own humanity. As Paulo Freire would say, we need an education that holds our conscientization or building critical awareness of our reality through reflection and action. Passing Prop 15 is a very clear action. And we achieve this not only through our schools, but through our organizing. The ruling class does not want this awakening to happen. They do not want this work to be happening. We will be confronted by chambers of commerce and taxpayers associations who will pour tons of money into fighting Prop 15 and argue things like, this hurts job providers and we can't afford tax increases coming out of COVID. But what we actually can't afford is the continued harm done to students and working class families because of under-resourced schools and communities. What we can't afford is austerity that protects the rich and corporate class. It is killing us in real time. And what would it mean to have actual safety nets when we literally can't go to work, when jobs can't be created, and when we have to prioritize our health and the lives of our loved ones and our communities? What would that look like? These are just some questions to ask when we're speaking to those who may not Quite understand their socialists yet, but they want the things we're speaking with them about, they may be almost there. So I'm just wanting to close by saying I'm so encouraged in this moment. Hundreds of people have been joining DSA each week because this all becomes clear every day in the pandemic and in the uprising. We've had some incredible wins for radical candidates. Go Corey, go Rashida over the past few weeks and days. Let's keep that going. It shows that people believe our world can and must be better. We have to commit to our power and to our work that it will require to save our own lives. So if you haven't already, though I know many of you have, join DSA. Say, sign up for a phone bank and let's get to it. Ooh, my Kiko, thank you so much. You speakers have my heart racing. We're, I'm ready to fight. I know you're all ready to fight. We can tell by looking in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, our last speaker, 
Jennifer Esteen is a dedicated public servant, social justice and advocate, and psychiatric registered nurse working for the San Francisco Department of Public Health. In her role as a nurse, Jennifer has served the most vulnerable adults in San Francisco who have been directly affected by the impact of poverty, marginalization, and oppression. Jennifer was appointed by the San Francisco Board of Supervisors to serve as a member of the Housing Conservatorship Working Group in San Francisco. She also serves on the Eden Area Municipal Advisory Council and was appointed by Alameda County Board of Supervisor Nate Miley. Jennifer is working as the Vice President of, or of Organizing for SEIU 1021 and previously held a position as a board member of the Jewish Youth for Community Action. Jen, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thanks for having me. Gosh, after Makiko spoke, I'm like, let's get them all. Because you know what? It's time. Petition signing where almost 2 million Californians, the most in history supported this ballot measure getting to the ballot for us to make a vote in November. Every single DSA member who's on this call tonight is here because we have work to do and we need to make calls, we need to knock on virtual doors, and we need to make sure that all of our neighbors, family, and friends know that austerity measures will not work anymore. Balancing the budget on the back of every single public worker and every child in the state is unethical, it's immoral, and it cannot continue. I'm a public sector worker and I stand for people's values. Every day as a nurse, it breaks my heart to see my colleagues have to get dressed in garbage bags. It breaks my heart to know that my colleagues cannot have adequate PPE in order to provide the basic care and services necessary. As a nurse, I have been a clinical instructor, I've been an adjunct professor, and I know what it is to teach but I've never been a school nurse because the option to work in a hospital or to work in a school was something that I couldn't economically choose. I would love to be a, a teacher and a nurse where my children have been educated in public school systems, but I couldn't afford to make that choice. We should never be putting the capitalist class structure above the health and well-being of our children. It is simply unfair. The Black movement for Black lives that is happening and that is underway shows the momentum when people stand together. I am so proud of the thousands of people who have spent weeks and months standing up against the powers that be. The momentum that we see in New York where there was a clean sweep of DSA candidates, for Jackie Fielder right now, where we see trade unions saying, no more for the traditional candidates, we will consider something new. We're talking about labor unions who usually are made up of the brethren of white men saying no more to the traditional democratic structure. There is more than a window opening here that we can get through. There is an explosion happening, an explosion of socialist ideas, an explosion of people power, and right now, today, we all have the opportunity to come together and blow it wide open. $12 billion can rain down upon this state every single year when we get voters to pass Proposition 15. When we all stand behind schools and communities first, we will win like we have never won before. But this pandemic of economic racism this pandemic called COVID-19 has taken us down a notch. And when we get schools and communities first in order, we will be able to stand up once again to put people who are no longer working into schools so that we can have smaller class sizes because we'll have more opportunity with more funding. But once we get schools and communities first, the work will not be over. We will have to hold all of our elected officials accountable so that all of the funds we secure are spent in the ways that they are promised and in the ways that we know they need to be spent. We have a lot of work to do. The fight began with 2 million signatures and the fight continues right now as we make calls and knock on these doors so that every voter in California can stand up and say yes on Proposition 15. Jen, thank you so much. Wow. 
as our speakers have mentioned, twelve billion dollars that that we would reclaim that was ours that our students our communities they deserve that thank you so much to our speakers our comrades have actually sent in um, a few questions that i would like you guys to answer um you don't don't all have to answer but if you just want to kind of jump in go ahead and i want to continue um where jen left off of holding our elected officials accountable that when we pass, not if, when we pass Prop 15, that they're going to use the funds for schools and our local services. So one of the questions is, um, what, what can we do once we pass Prop 15 to ensure that the funds are used for that and not for, let's say, beefing up police? Um, anyone like to take that? How can we ensure that they are going to use the funds um, as they're supposed to? Sure. Um, we, we need to um, elect candidates like, like Jackie. And in, in Oakland, um, we have um, a school board race also in November. And um, in, in, in Oakland, we are using a lot of the same structures that we did to build a community coalition and the same structures that we use to build um, our strike to also um, build a movement um, to pass Proposition 15 and elect um, a school board that is not bought off by um, billionaires and privatizers because um, currently in Oakland, we have a school board um, backed by the billionaires who are responsible for the, the, the uh, disinvestment of our schools. So we need to um, elect candidates with a vision for the people that will serve the people, that will serve our students, and that will be accountable for um, funding such as uh, prop Prop 15 schools and communities first to make sure that that funding goes directly to our students. It goes directly to our communities just to improve the essential services. So it's electing those candidates and also using those same um, structures and coalitions to hold um, the, our electeds um, accountable. Absolutely. So true. And I'm, I'm noticing in the chat names of some of these um, elect, potential elected officials that could help ensure that. Uh, would any of our other speakers like to address that question? Uh, another question was, how do your, your union members or constituents feel about Prop 15? And what are they currently doing to help the campaign? So at SEIU, we had a statewide coalition out collecting signatures, and I think we collected, out of all the two million signatures, we collected like 40,000 signatures amongst our members. Um, what we're also doing, we have an 80-80-80 goal at SEIU 10 one which is to get 80% of our members to vote down ballot so that they can uh, support all the initiatives and ballot measures. So that would be a yes on 15. That's a big fat no on 22 because we're sick of corporate greed. Corporate greed is being attacked uh, by, you know, Uber and Lyft put $100 million behind Prop 22. They bought this ballot measure and they want to continue exploiting workers and we won't have it anymore. So Proposition 15 helps to erase that and make sure that no more exploitation can take place from Chevron, from McDonald's, from uh, Walmart. They need to pay their fair share in taxes. They haven't paid, Disneyland hasn't paid taxes uh, at the right rate since 1978. And I'm tired of that. Disney plus on the TV, they're making so much money and they refuse to pay their taxes. Enough is enough, enough is enough. Absolutely. Uh, again, how do your constituents or union members feel about Prop 15 and what, what are they doing to help the campaign? Jackie, would you like to speak to that? 
Absolutely. So I think in District 11, which is all of San Francisco, Daly City, Colma, and parts of South San Francisco, uh, we think, thankfully, because of the work of uh, unions like SEIU 1021 and United Educators of San Francisco, uh, my own faculty union, California Faculty Association, and so many other groups have laid the groundwork for years to make sure that Prop 13 reform is at the top of a lot of people's priorities and minds. Um, you know, this is a district that is ground zero for inequality. We're talking 1,400 SFUSD students are currently homeless. That was before the pandemic now, and it could be worse even as we are enduring the pandemic and its effects. And so homelessness is obviously a huge issue. At the same time, our city in San Francisco has 75 billionaires, billion with a B. California as a whole has 175 billionaires. We also know that uh, Prop 15 is only going to affect, you know, the, the wealthiest corporations of our state. It's going to cut small business taxes. I saw someone earlier asking questions about how do I talk to my neighbors that are kind of concerned about what this will do. And it exempts homeowners, renters, small businesses, and agricultural land uh, at the same time. And I would like to note that it also prioritizes transparency and accountability by requiring public disclosure of all new revenues and how they are spent. At the same time, I will echo so many other people's sentiments that we need to elect people that are not beholden to these mega wealthy corporations. They're not beholden to the rideshare companies that are beholden to our communities and everyday people, educators, public employees, all workers, unemployed people, and so many other communities. Um, you know, I think, I think that we have a really good chance uh, to make history with passing Prop 15. And I would just encourage everyone to just continue to remind people that this is just to get us to the bare minimum of where we need to be so we are no longer among the bottom in the nation for per student spending. And as, as people were talking about earlier, we are in crisis learning mode, crisis teaching mode. And we're asking students, families, teachers to do more with less. This is only going to catch us up to where we needed to be before the pandemic. So thank you everyone for your hard work. And I'm so excited to see all of the responses in the chat. It's so exciting to see this amount of support, especially among my comrades. Absolutely, thank you so much. It's, it's clear why you are a DSA endorsed candidate. Um, a final question um, for my Kiko, if you don't mind. How, how is DSA especially positioned to take this campaign to the next level? Thank you. Um, I mean, again, I said it before, but it really is an incredible time for our movement and our organization. Hundreds of people are joining each week since the beginning of the pandemic, because again, what other alternative do we have? We have seen how capitalism has utterly failed us. Um, so people are realizing not only is socialism a better alternative, it's the only alternative. So we have to take advantage of the moment that we are now over 70,000 constitutional members and help people understand what that means, right? I think in our organization, we talk about the distinction between um, paper members and those who are more actively engaged, but now is not the moment for letting our members disengage. I think we have to be very serious and intentional about what it means to be a political actor in our lives in this moment, right? Because we are seeing how fascism and racism are killing people in the streets, in hospitals, all over. Um, and I think what is really encouraging to see so many people on this call is that our chapters really have an opportunity to talk to our members in a very concrete, practical way about organizing. So 
whereas, you know, and I will certainly say I've had this issue in DSA where I'm like, oh, great, I, I'm joined. Now what do I do? There is now no question for what anyone in California should do. And there are many issues at hand and we have lots of other things to participate in. But passing something like Prop 15 is so feasible in this moment. We have to make sure that every single one of our members within our chapters have the resources and talking points and ability to talk about this articulately. And I think it can be easily done, right? So as we go forth from this call, we'll be trying to equip all of our leaders and members with what they need to talk to other people in their lives about why we need to pass Prop 15, right? And why that fundamentally is, as Jackie's saying, just the bare minimum of what we need to do as socialists and what we need to do as people who care about the lives of others in our state and in our nation and in the world. Um, and I think it's a really exciting time to build all of our skills as organizers to understand what that means is having conversations, having hard conversations with people who don't agree with us, but who Whose lives we care about because really it would be hard pressed to meet someone who doesn't care about children, who doesn't care about not catching COVID if they believe it exists. Um, and I think that that's really the position we find ourselves in now. We don't have time to waste. We all have to engage. Uh, and DSA really has an opportunity to show our force in this state um, and to both elect people that we believe in and to pass propositions like Schools and Communities First. Absolutely. Thank you. We don't want to just be paper members, right, comrades? Uh, thank you so much, our speakers. You guys have all been incredible. We truly appreciate your time and your dedication to the passage of Prop 15. Um, and speaking to what all of our speakers were saying, we're going to have to be active. So in the chat, I hope you noticed a link for Mobilize this Sunday, August 9th. We will be holding a phone bank event with the official Schools and Communities First campaign from seven to nine. Mark your calendars. I will definitely speak more to this um, towards the end of our program, but definitely check out that link. Sign up this Sunday, August 9th from seven to nine. Let's start phone banking. So now my comrades, there are so many of you on the line. Um, now it's, it's going to be your turn to put in a little bit of work. We know that ballots are going to drop in October, so the countdown has begun. We don't have much time. We want to utilize every single day that we have. So we are going to go ahead and head into breakout rooms for discussion of what actions we as members of DSA can participate in to meet the goals of our statewide campaign. Uh, we have several facilitators. Um, our facilitators, go ahead and give a wave if you don't mind. 